esteemed panelists, greetings of the day. I, Devraj Singh, will be presenting on behalf of Group 21. Zelena Mesto, a green and sustainable city designed and planned by Group 21. This is our team that worked in tandem to make this project possible. Planning a green urban environment start, starts at its very foundations. Hence, we start from the very building blocks. Our city will use pervious concrete. Pervious or porous concrete is instrumental in recharging groundwater and reducing stormwater runoff. As an example, a parking lot can be used to capture excess runoff from rain falling both on itself and on surrounding areas, including the rain collected and discharged through roof drains of nearby buildings. Transport system, bicycles. An integrated system of bridges, edge lane roads, pedestrian and bicycle priority streets and cycle superhighways will ensure sustainable urban mobility and lower the accident risks. Designated lanes for hydrogen powered and electric buses will be made to avoid traffic issues. Our city will also incorporate smart rail, metro and maglev trains. One of, the most, one of the most effective and important ways for green transport is the carpooling system and the limit on individual car use. Parking spaces and vehicle heavy areas will have suitable plants to reduce air and noise pollution efficiently. Our city will reserve land use. There will be prior planning and allocation of specific land for different purposes so that construction activity does not compromise green cover. The city will be divided into zones to provide relief from industrial and noise pollution. Our city will have green spaces and street greenery, along with parks and biodiversity rich zones. Biodiversity sensitive urban design promotes human nature interactions and nature stewardship among, among city residents. It will add value to the range of benefits urban greening provides and helps to deliver greener, cleaner and cooler cities in which residents live longer and are less stressed and more productive. Every house in our green city will have green roofs and green walls. This is another way to increase green cover. Green roofs and green walls will help in providing heat in winter and will provide a cooling effect in summer. They are ideal for sound insulation, mitigate the effects of the so-called heat islands, contribute to reducing smog, pollutants and dust in urban areas, save money in terms of energy spent by cooling and heating devices, and save storm water runoff. Biodiversity protection. Wildlife corridors between green spaces. Providing options for wildlife to travel and find new food sources, water sources and mates are extremely important to urban biodiversity using soft engineering techniques such as rain gardens to handle storm water is a good way to provide wildlife corridors. Native grasses, shrubs and trees are most likely to, to thrive in rain gardens, which are relatively barrier free. They also keep the wildlife out of, out of danger from vehicles. Rain gardens. Rain gardens, also called bioretention facilities, are one of a variety of practices designed to treat polluted storm water runoff. Separation of factory areas by green belts. These green belts will create a distinct separation between heavy industrial and residential, as well as office areas, protecting the residents from air, noise, and heat pollution. It will also prevent cities from becoming heat islands and significantly reduce the net emissions of greenhouse gases. Our city will make use of both renewable and non-renewable energy sources. Optimal usage shall be the ideal mode for energy conservation. There are several hurdles that play havoc in energy conservation, like lack of awareness, lack of technical knowledge, and capital shortages. 
Three rules to reduce the ecological footprint in our city would be the use of solar power, recycling economy, and cooperation between city and region. We have taken inspiration from the following economies for our city. Sweden, from waste to energy. Sweden has 34 waste to energy power plants in the country. The recycling rate is so satisfactory that the country needs to import garbage from other countries to keep these power plants at full capacity throughout the year. Japan, optimizing segregation. Thoroughness is the key to the success of Japan's recycling system. Neighborhoods are responsible for sorting, treating, and segregating their household waste, and then complying with a strict and scheduled collecting calendar. This image shows the waste segregation being practiced in Japan. Switzerland, waste reduction. The Alpine country has succeeded in waste reduction by adopting measures such as the single bag. To get rid of non-recyclable waste, you must buy official garbage bags with a higher price while recycling is free. South Korea, the problem of food. South Korea has set out to tackle its food waste problem with an ambitious plan that combines deterrent measures with a sizable investment in technology. Just as in Switzerland, bags for recycling organic waste have a special price that is used to fund the recycling process. They are biodegradable. The bags are deposited in automated bins that weigh food waste. To use the bins, residents are required to identify themselves using an ID card. The bins then charge the residents based on the amount of weight they deposit. This diagram shows the zero waste hierarchy with avoiding unnecessary consumption at the top and disposing minimally at the last rung. The following solutions will be incorporated in designing our city. Use of traditional housing material, incorporating public transit, bicycle lanes and sharing, hybrid cars, green space, solar panels, waste management, and water conservation. Sustainable resource management. Availability of water has become a major problem. This image shows water and its central position in relation to processes such as biodiversity, energy, and climate. Some solutions to the above mentioned problem are an economic evaluation of water resources, services, and of aquatic ecosystems, proper governance of water, and promoting the management of water at the watershed level. The buildings in our ideal green urban environment will be LEED certified, that is, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design certified. LEED certified buildings help in promoting green cover and in the conservation of resources by increasing water efficiency and saving on power consumption. An indicator of environmental sustainability in our city will be the ecological footprint. This image shows the ecological footprint with forest products, carbon footprint, cropland, pasture, the built up land and the fisheries. Our city will have a unique source of electricity, that is, solar, a solar chimney. A solar chimney consists of three essential elements, a glass roof collector, a chimney, and a wind turbine. Air is heated in a very large circular structure, similar to a greenhouse, and the resulting convection causes the air to rise and escape through a tall tower. The moving air drives turbines, which produce electricity. Every house in our dream green city will use solar energy for heating as well as cooling. Solar energy for heating. The sun's rays strike the solar panel and heat the cold air. Hot air rises up. This creates a convection current and the house is heated. Amazingly, it can also be used for cooling. The sun's rays strike the solar panels and heat the cold air. The hot air exits the house and creates a pressure with which cold air enters from the other side of the house, thereby cooling the house. The construction industry consumes 40% of the total energy and about one half of the world's major resources. Hence, 
it is imperative to regulate the use of materials and energy in this industry. Green and intelligent buildings and LEED certification have been evolved for sustainability of the construction industry. Green economy. Our city will have a green and circular economy. To implement a circular economy, the starting point is a new design of manufacturing processes of products and services. They must be redesigned to assure a longer durability of the item, easy repair, a possibility of reworking and upgrading, a massive recycling of components and raw materials before the end of their service life. Now, I would like to highlight the layout, the layout of our dream green city. Our city will use solar panels for electricity, green roads, there will be windmills, a park next to each building, green bays above each road, buildings will be surrounded with ample greenery. As an example, we can see a green building and there will be a centralized park. Putting a visual to our, th to our thoughts, we present an aerial view of our city. Starting at the center, we have the Greenpeace Biodiversity Park for the citizens to connect with nature. Our model has clear zoning with self-sufficient residential blocks. Further, it merges into the light factories and then the heavy industries. Zelena Mesto also has clear chalked out routes for various modes of transport. This is what our dream city will look like. Welcome to this green city. As you can see, there is at least one park next to each building. The main road has a row of trees which add to the greenery. We also have two modern greenways, an old farm. Western Springs, a jogging path, and a green building. There is a recycling center which recycles all the waste, and a sewage treatment plant. It treats all the sewage underground, hence minimizing the pollution. We have a solar power plant and three wind power plants which provide electricity. We also have a centralized green area. So this was the overview of this green city. Thanks for watching. This was the overview of our city. We have planned our city in such a way that future innovations in sustainable urban development can be incorporated. Thank you.